It is important to spray the vocal cords with lidocaine in order to pass the scope through. Involuntary muscle spasms are normal. However, numbing the area will allow the bronchoscope to pass through more easily. Notice here the racing stripes or longitudinal muscle that run along posteriorly. The cathedral arches are trademarked for healthy tracheal rings that run the length of the trachea anteriorly. The esophagus lies directly behind the trachea. Be aware that the innominate vein passes over the trachea closer to the carina. Left and right recurrent laryngeal nerves adhere bilaterally to the trachea. The longitudinal muscle that runs posteriorly will continue to run down the left and right main bronchi and often into the lower lobes. A clear and healthy carina will have a sharp angle at bifurcation. It is here that lymph nodes most commonly sampled at zones 4L, 4R, and 7, or the lower paratracheal and subcranial nodes, exist. Be especially aware of these superior and inferior paratracheal lymph masses as they adhere to the aortic arch and pulmonary trunk. One of the most distinguishing features of the right lung is the right upper lobe bronchus. The first early upward turn in bifurcation will be into the right upper lobe. This can be found proximal to the secondary carina. The bronchus intermedius will lead towards the right middle and lower lobes. Most commonly, the right upper lobe will split into a trifurcation of the anterior, posterior, and apical segments. However, here we only see a bifurcation of the right upper lobe. The right bronchus intermedius leads to the middle and lower lobes. The longitudinal muscle can be seen running along the posterior wall of the RBI and commonly seen entering the right lower lobe. As you can see in this example, the right middle lobe splits into medial and lateral segments. In comparison, the right middle lobe is considerably smaller in diameter than the entrance to the right lower lobe. The right lower lobe contains five segments, a superior segment and four parts of the basal trunk. Seen here, it is easy to identify the superior segment of the right as it branches in the superior direction. In a typical patient, the basal trunk will divide into four segments. Here, the medial segment is seen on the left and bunched together on the right is the anterior, lateral, and posterior basal segments from top to bottom. Similar to the right main bronchus, notice the longitudinal muscle that runs posteriorly for orientation. Unlike the right bronchus, there are no early branches. Turn the scope 90 degrees to the left so that the anterior wall should be at the 3 o'clock position of the scope. So that way the scope can retroflex into the left upper lobe compared to being turned the opposite way. The bifurcation between the left, left upper and left lower lobe is easy to remember. Okay, Up is the upper lobe and down is the lower lobe. Longitudinal muscle also has a tendency to run into the left lower lobe. From this view we can identify the bifurcation of the lower lobe into its superior segment and basilar trunk. The left upper lobe splits into the lingula, seen on the right, and an upper division. The lingula is identified by its rightward direction and bifurcation into inferior and superior segments. The upper division of the left upper lobe creates a trademark Mercedes or peace sign in its trifurcation of the apical, posterior, and anterior segments. In this example, the scope is flipped around to gain access to the left lower lobe divisions. 
and the superior segment is now to our 3 o'clock position and the basal trunk at the 10 o'clock position. The basal segment will contain an anterior, lateral, and posterior basal segments. However, it is common that the anterior and medial segments will fuse. Seen here, the anteromedial basal is at the 3 o'clock position and the lateral and posterior basal segments are at the 8 o'clock position respectively.